Happy Friday, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we got a great presentation uh, ahead we have of us a, today. A, a good topic to discuss this Ab afternoon. Absolutely. And we thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, whenever we're at shows and, and different things, I think hoof abscesses is probably one of the top questions we It, it is. It's right there, along with, say, thrush, mm -hmm. uh, laminitis white line disease they're all right up there at the top uh, as we talk to horse owners around the world really uh and, and, and of course an abscess is is one of the things that's mentioned over and over and over absolutely i know it's also been one of the the top requested live event mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we're here to do today for any of you who are joining us for the first time today uh, welcome. If you've joined us many times, welcome. Sure. Um, but that's what we're here to do is to, is to talk about hoof abscesses, talk about hoof health and, and nutrition, and how that plays a role in hoof abscesses. Um, so we're also going to be having some trivia today um, and we're going to just have a good time. Uh, we're pretty laid back mm -hmm. when it comes to this. It looks like we've got a lot of people joining us today. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might be a little bit harder for us to moderate those comments. Uh, so if we happen to miss one of your questions, um, you know, we apologize, but please feel free to message us privately or email us at cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Um, before we get started, just a few housekeeping things. Um, you know, this event is free. Uh, so we don't require any type of credit cards or so on. I've seen a few uh, fake accounts post links. You know, don't click any links or anything like that. Uh, when we do our contest or our giveaways, uh, we don't private message. Um, and again, we don't need credit cards because if you want to give away, you want, you've won it. That's right. And it's absolutely <laughs> free. Absolutely. So just, mm -hmm. a, just a word for advice when it comes to social media and someone sends you a link to something, normally you don't want to click it unless you really know that person. Right. Um, we got a lot of people here joining us today. We've got, I saw Scotland, Yorkshire, Pennsylvania, Texas, um, Nevada, Kentucky. So all over the world today. Very good. Uh, again, uh, thank you for joining us. And, um, well, uh, do you want to talk about just some of the giveaways and so on real quick? Yeah, I think, started? sure. In, in fact, you know, during the presentation at, at certain times, mm -hmm. we're going to ask a question. Absolutely. And you'll have the opportunity to respond back. Absolutely. Uh, and we'll give you two minutes to to respond back, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to reply back to us. And during that two minutes, we had a, a bunch of, very good questions that were sent in in advance. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're going to spend a few minutes in answering those during that two-minute time frame, and then a winner will be selected and announced absolutely. to your live. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Uh, of course, me and Mike here, we're, we're based in the United States. Uh, Life Data is based in the United mm -hmm. States. Uh, and due to those international giveaway laws, we can actually only allow the U.S. residents to participate. Um, so we apologize about that in advance. Um, but for those, uh, for those live giveaways, uh, for the trivia questions, uh, we've got the Life Data t-shirt, uh, the Farrier's Finish, and the Life Data hoof clay, which we'll talk about a little bit right. later today. Um, and then we also have our Breeders Formula, which is our, our product for dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great for the skin and coat. Um, and so we're going to have three trivia questions. So we'll have three of these packages. Uh, be available to win and we also have our grand prize giveaway uh, and that link should be scrolling um, underneath me sure um, and again uh, you know we we will not private message you or and not charge you a credit card um, so uh, we of course have the grand prize giveaway mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that a little bit later we do have a secret uh, code word mm -hmm. uh, that will increase your chances to win that we'll give a little bit later on into the presentation but I know that everybody is here to, uh, to talk about hoof abscesses. So, Mike, I know when we talk about prevention, today that's what we're going to concentrate on is, is of course, right. prevention. But I feel like, personally, to prevent a hoof abscess, we really have to understand what exactly is a hoof abscess. Yeah, absolutely. And then once we get beyond that, we have to have an understanding of actually what causes the abscess itself. Absolutely. Uh, but to get us started, 
uh, I think we need to talk about exactly what an abscess is, mm -hmm. okay? And, of course, I, I think we all understand that an abscess is simply a bacterial infection within the hoof capsule itself. Mm -hmm. And if I might get my uh, hoof model here, uh, if, if, you will, if we can focus on that there, essentially right underneath the hoof wall, uh, we have a, a layer that's referred to as the white line. Uh, the layer that's right underneath this hoof wall itself is what we call insensitive tissue right under that that actually binds or ties into the coffin bone is our sensitive tissue. Now, where an abscess is going to take place is within that sensitive tissue itself, uh, simply because within that sensitive tissue, we have our blood flow there. Mm -hmm. So we can have an issue here, right underneath the hoof wall itself. And then, of course, we have the sole that you see here. And the same thing applies here. We have sensitive tissue here as well. So we can have an abscess to take place underneath the hoof wall or between the bottom of the coffin bone and the sole of the foot itself. Yeah, you tilt that just a little okay. bit. Okay, does that go. help a little better yeah. there? Yeah. So we're referring to underneath the hoof wall in the sensitive area, underneath the coffin bone, and between the sole and the sensitive area right there itself. Now, the thing that we need to realize with the particular problem is that that bacteria has to enter into that hoof capsule to create the problem itself. Absolutely. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and this can be an anaerobic form of bacteria. It can be a form of aerobic bacteria. In most cases, it's going to be an anaerobic form. Uh, that form of that type of bacteria thrives in the absence of oxygen itself. Absolutely. So, uh, essentially, it's uh, it's an infection. And of course, during this infection process, uh, the body has a way of fighting off anything that would enter into the hoof capsule, especially if it's a foreign object or if it's bacteria. In fact, the way that the horse is going to respond to this, it, it's going to send out white blood cells. Mm -hmm. They're going to attack this. And during this process, we're going to end up with dead tissue. We're going to end up with uh, inflammation. We're going to end up with uh, pus. Mm -hmm. And, of course, as you can see, especially underneath the hoof wall, there's not a whole lot of room there. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen is this inflammation is going to expand, it's going to grow, it's going to exert extreme pressure there, and that's going to cause extreme pain for the horse. And, and that's why we actually, uh, a lot of these horses will be dead lame a lot of times mm -hmm. when, when a horse actually has an abscess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so that's essentially what an abscess is. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Well, Mike, can we talk a little bit about the, the different types of abscesses? Uh, we absolutely can. In fact, we, in fact uh, we've kind of pointed that out already, uh, but I'll get my foot back out here. Get as close to that camera as you can. Okay. And tilt it. There you go. All right. Hopefully you can see this again. Of course, right underneath the hoof wall and right above the top of the coffin bone is our sensitive tissue there. And if we have an abscess that forms here, it's called simply called a hoof wall abscess or a submural abscess. If it forms here underneath the coffin bone, right above the sole of the foot, then it's a sole abscess, a solar abscess uh, is what we refer to uh, that type of a, of a problem. So two types. Uh, you have the solar abscess and then you have your hoof wall abscess there. Absolutely. Okay? Now, if we have a hoof wall abscess, most of the time they're going to want to exit here at the coronary band. Of course, if we have a solar abscess right 
as we see here, uh, that solar abscess likes to take the path of least resistance. And the softest part of the foot here is going to be back in the heel bulb area. And a lot of times that abscess is going to exit uh, back here in the rear. Unless we've called in our vet farrier, uh, they've located the abscess and they actually go in and they pare it out and they relieve that pressure that way as well. Absolutely. So those are the two types of uh, abscess. I mean, the two types of uh, yeah abscesses that we're talking about there. All right. Do we have a couple of examples that we could uh, could show them? It it uh, yeah we do. In fact, I'm sorry. Let's go to slide one. And in slide one, you're going to see a very nasty case of a solar abscess mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've gotten bacteria underneath the sole itself. And as you can see, it's totally undermined the, uh, the sole. And then you can see where it is actually exited out. And, and of course, uh, the farrier and the vet were working to the, together and they kind of come in and they had to pair this out to relieve the pressure itself. Now, if you'll go to slide number two, Mr. Will, you're going to see where the abscess has exited the uh, coronary band there, and that's what we call a hoof wall uh, abscess. And if you'll look down to, uh, toward the uh, follow the abscess downward, you can tell that this uh, horse has been shot in the past. We can see old nail holes there. We can see that we've had some chipping, uh, a little cracking going on there. And we're going to talk about that a little bit further in detail because that probably is one of the reasons that that horse ended up with this particular abscess right Absolutely. here that we're looking at. Okay? Absolutely. So that was our solar abscess and our hoof wall lab says a couple of examples there. Absolutely. Well, well, Mike, I know, especially talking with horse owners, you know, with a hoof abscess, one day the horse is completely fine. Mm -hmm. The next day, the horse is lame. They, sure. they can seem to just pop up with, with a blink of an eye. Absolutely. So what are some signs that these horse owners can look for to help with that prevention, to help catch that hoof abscess before it becomes... Sure. A bigger problem. Okay. Of course, one of the things that you just mentioned, Corbin, is a horse can be fine today. Mm -hmm. 24 hours later, when we go back to check on the horse, that horse can be dead lame. Mm -hmm. Okay. It can happen that quick. Mm -hmm. All right. We often refer to that as the broken leg syndrome because it's a scary situation. Absolutely. You know, uh, the horse is non weight bearing on that particular leg there. Our first thought is broke leg, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? But hopefully that's not the case in the better scenario that it is an abscess to have to deal with, okay? Absolutely. So the broken leg syndrome, it happens quickly, okay? And if we actually felt uh, back behind the, uh, uh, the fetlock there, we can, a lot of times we can actually feel a digital pulse, a, mm -hmm. a bounding that's going on there. Uh, that's another indication that we've got a uh, an abscess that's going on. We can actually have a little swelling in the lower limb itself. Uh, and, and sometimes if you actually feel of uh, the hoof wall, the hoof capsule, we can actually detect a little heat, a little warmth there that's going on. And that's another telltale sign as well. Uh, of course, we can actually have uh, a track that has burst or opened up and we can see where the actually abscess is actually left uh, the hoof capsule itself. And of course in a situation like that the abscess is ruptured and the pain is pretty much left that horse at that point in time as well. And we might even have an uh, evidence of a hoof injury as well which allowed the bacteria to enter and once bacteria enters that hoof capsule, it's just a matter of, say, three or four days, and then we've got the problem uh, that's taking place there. And, of course, uh, as an abscess drains itself, there's uh, uh, various colors that we're going to see, anywhere from a gray to a black to a clear 
discharge uh, from the, uh, the, the exit wound itself then. Absolutely. So those are some of the, the signs of a horse that actually has an abscess or is experiencing an abscess. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Wonderful. All right. In fact, Corbin, I think, and we've already answered the question, mm-hmm. but uh, let's ask question number one right now. Okay. And Wonderful. let's give our audience the opportunity to respond back mm-hmm. for an opportunity to win our well, prize pack here. All yeah. right. And like yeah. Mike said, you know, if you if you really pay attention, uh, he's going to give out these answers before uh, before we even ask them. Sure. So yeah. uh, so everyone already, already has a step up, right? That's right. Um, so this is question number one. We're going to give you about two minutes. Uh, and again, this is for the U.S. only. Uh, and that's un- unfortunately, we wish we could do it for everybody. Um, but we just are unable to. Um, but with this prize pack, you'll win a T-shirt, a finish, or the finish, the hoof clay, and the breeder's formula. Uh, so what the way this works, I'm going to ask the question, you have two minutes to answer it, and then we're going to randomly select one of the individuals who got it correctly, um, and that person will win. Mm-hmm. So the first question, an abscess involves the blank, oh, an abscess involves either the sensitive or the insensitive tissue in the hoof capsule. Which one? Which one does it involve? The sensitive or the insensitive tissue. Mm-hmm. So you have two minutes, uh, and, and good luck. In the meantime, as Mike mentioned a little bit earlier, we asked Facebook, we said, what questions do you have involving hoof abscesses? And we got a ton, ton of replies. Sure. Uh, we won't be able to answer every one, but we're going to We will to, not. To we're going to do our best to answer as many as we can. So let me pull these out here. Um, okay, let's see. First question, is a barefoot horse more likely to get a hoof abscess? You know, that's a very good question, and I I don't know that there's any uh, research uh, that's been done to determine if an abscess would be more prevalent in a barefoot horse versus a shot horse. Uh, Personally speaking, I think that's an individual thing in itself, depending upon that individual horse. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many factors that are involved as to whether or not a horse will come down with an abscess. A lot of these that we can control, some of these we cannot control as well. Mm -hmm. But to answer the question, I can't say that uh, a barefoot horse is going to have more abscesses, or a shod horse is going to have, they're both going to have abscesses, yes. Mm-hmm. And if you're a horse owner that's never had an abscess, I'd say count yourself lucky. Absolutely. Sure, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, the next question Does biotin help with hoof abscesses? Uh, and that's a very good question, too. Does nutrition play a role mm-hmm. in preventing hoof abscesses? And the answer is absolutely yes, it will. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing about feeding biotin by itself is that somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four percent of the horse population would actually have a biotin deficiency. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a shot in the dark where we're simply feeding biotin to help improve hoof quality. Biotin is needed by the horse, yes, okay? Mm -hmm. We know that. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about that. But if a horse actually has a true biotin deficiency, the odds are going to be highly likely that there's other deficiencies that are involved as well besides the biotin. So that's where a hoof supplement, a complete hoof supplement comes into play that will have biotin in it, yes, but it will have other minerals, it'll have mm-hmm. other vitamins, and you must need it amino acids, mm-hmm. whether that's your omega-6s or your omega-3s, mm-hmm. okay? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the chances of a horse is deficient in biotin, there's chances they're going to be deficient in other things as that's, well. That is the, that's exactly right, yeah. What we have seen here at Life Data Labs, if you had a true biotin deficiency, there's other deficiencies in that horse as well and they need to be met as well Absolutely. in order for the horse to grow good quality foot. Absolutely. And that's what we're after there. It's not, not necessarily hoof growth as quick as we can get it, but we want 
quality growth. Absolutely. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that quality growth is going to go a long way in preventing a hoop abscess. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Okay, well, I think we've gone over our two, our two minutes here. Um, and so I believe we do have a winner. Uh, an abscess involves the sensitive tissue. That is correct. The sensitive tissue. Mm -hmm. um, and can you move the over just a little bit there? Well, a little bit more. There you go. Um, and the winner is Richard Goodson. And congratulations, Richard. Absolutely. Congratulations, Richard. What you're going to do is you're going to email cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Uh, that email address should be scrolling down in the green at some point in time. That is cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Uh, in the subject line, you can put live giveaway winner, uh, and we'll need your t-shirt size and your shipping address. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and again, you know, when we do these giveaways, uh, we'll contact you through, you know, via email, or in this case, Richard's going to email us. Uh, we will not private message you, and we will not ask for a credit card or anything along those lines. Um, okay, Mike, well, now we've, um, we've talked about what is a hoof abscess and signs of a hoof, ab mm -hmm. hoof abscess. Um, but I know a lot of people are wondering what exactly is causing these hoof abscesses. And, and that's something that we need to know because if we can actually identify what's causing it, then we can make corrections there, and that's going to go a long way in preventing a future abscess. Okay. Absolutely. So one of the first things that we need to talk about will be in an environmental situation, mm -hmm. and that's going to be wet, and that's going to be dry conditions. Mm -hmm. Both of those contribute to a horse having an abscess, mm -hmm. by all Absolutely. means, okay? Now, I know that there are certain parts of the U.S., there are certain parts of the world that has been extremely wet, mm -hmm. and then there are certain parts that has been extremely dry. Absolutely. And if you kind of have a basic understanding of what takes place in a hoof capsule, under wet conditions, and that kind of clues you in as to why that horse is more prone to abscessing. In wet conditions, that uh, hoof capsule and the sole of the foot is going to soften. It's also going to expand in those wet conditions as well. And during that expansion, a lot of times we may have a little separation uh, in the white line area and when we do that that gives us an entry point for bacteria to enter and what we always want to have is a very healthy and a very tight sole hoof wall junction as we see here we don't want to have any gap we don't want to have any separation that's going on because if we do that allows debris and bacteria to enter at that point in time mm -hmm. as well. Now, the worst case scenario is going from wet to dry, wet to dry, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and, you know, hopefully you're in a position where you can manage that. Uh, toward the end of the presentation, we're going to talk about a product that you can actually use that's going to help uh, alleviate that drastic change from wet to dry itself. Of course, when that hoof capsule dries out, in place of it expanding, it wants to contract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when it wants to contract, then we end up with a little chipping, a little cracking, mm -hmm. some insults in the hoof wall itself, and that's another entry point for bacteria to enter. Absolutely. And once it enters, then we have an abscess that's going to take place. Okay? And, and then uh, for any of you who are currently fighting those dry conditions, our last live event actually focused on dry conditions. Uh, right. So you can find that on our YouTube or here on our Facebook uh, if you would like to rewatch that and, and learn a little bit more about those dry conditions. Mm -hmm. All right. Another thing that we need to... Uh, and did we pull up slide number three, Will? Yeah, he pulled it up. We're good. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for... I, I forgot to remind you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Appreciate you taking care of me. Uh, another cause of a hoof abscess, and you can go ahead and pull up this slide to number four, please, sir. Uh, as you see there, we have two shots. Uh, we have a horse that's on a 
on gravel. Mm -hmm. We also have a horse that's on pavement or a hard surface itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the terrain, uh, any bruising that might take place to the sole, uh, anytime we have a sole bruise itself, uh, that sets us up for an abscess, or it can set us up for an abscess. Of course, on a rocky surface like this right here, uh, and, and this horse happens to be barefoot as well, uh, if, if, the, if we got some sharp edges upon the rocks, they can actually cut mm -hmm. uh, the sole itself, and that just opens it up for bacteria to enter at that point in time as well. So that's just another way for bacteria to get in mm -hmm. to that uh, hoof capsule and set itself up, uh, and, and then we have an abscess itself, okay? Absolutely. Either through a bruise or through some type of a cut uh, in the sole, or if we have some sole hoof wall separation there, mm -hmm. okay? Absolutely. All right. Another cause of a hoof abscess would be a penetrating wound. And Mr. Wheel has it pulled up there. And as you can see, we actually have a nail that has penetrated the sole of this particular foot here. This is a nasty situation. Yeah. Of course, anytime we have a penetration like that, uh, then basically that's pulling bacteria right into the hoof capsule itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And wor one word of caution to you is that if you ever have a situation like that where you have an object that is stuck into the sole of the foot, of course one of the things that we naturally want to do is to pull it out. Of course, that's one of the worst things that we can do. In fact, in a situation like this, this needs to be uh, treated as an emergency. We need to get our vet involved. The vet will probably want to take some x-rays. And through those x-rays, it's going to tell the vet exactly if there's any damage that's been done internally, either to the coffin bone, to the birth side, uh, to whatever, mm -hmm, or to mm -hmm. the navicular that's there. So let's not pull it out. Let's get the vet involved, uh, and then the vet's going to give us instructions on how to proceed at that point in time. Mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. So a penetrating wound, it can come from some form of a metal, a glass, uh, actually a rock, a stick, a splinter, any of those things that penetrate the sole of the foot uh, can set us up for an abscess, Corbin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And Mr. Will, if you will go to slide number six for me, please, sir. Another cause of a hoof abscess. And this goes back to the shoulders of the horse owner a lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, unless... Uh, uh, unless you have your horse boarded somewhere else, and, mm -hmm. and then you're, you're relying upon your, uh, those individuals to, number one, keep your stalls clean. Mm -hmm. You know, dirty stalls will contain enormous amounts of bacteria that would want to uh, attack the hoof capsule itself. Uh, we have fecal matter. We have uh, urine mm -hmm. that can collect in those stalls, and we know that uh, the urine itself is very detrimental to the sole of the foot. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be mindful that our stalls are kept clean. Uh, as a horse owner, we need to pick up those feet on a daily basis. We need to clean those feet. Mm -hmm. And we, and by doing that, we'll know if we have anything that's uh, not normal going on in the foot itself. If we know that we have an injury and we don't do anything about it, then that can lead to further complications. Uh, we also need to be mindful about certain topicals that we would put on the foot of the horse, the sole of the horse, especially if those are very caustic. They can actually kill, do damage to the tissue itself, weaken the surface itself, allowing bacteria to enter at that point in time as well. And we also be, we also need to always provide a balanced diet to the horse. Mm -hmm. 
if we're providing an unbalanced diet to the horse, that's going to directly affect hoof quality. If we have low hoof quality or poor hoof quality, then that foot loses its resistance to an invasion of bacteria as well. Mm -hmm. So diet is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're ready for question number question two. Question number two. All right. Uh, so question number two, again, you're going to have two minutes to answer this. Uh, and we're going to randomly select someone who got it correctly. And again, this is for the U.S. only. Mm -hmm. uh, and the person who randomly is selected who got it right will, of course, win the uh, prize package to my left here. Uh, so question number two, which is, again, something that we have gone over. Um, what are the two types of abscesses? Mm -hmm. There are two types. What are they? Um, and then while they're answering that, okay. I've, got, I've got more questions All for right. you, Mike. And I know I've, I've seen a few questions come, come in from those who are watching right now. Uh, here towards the end of the presentation, we will uh, have you guys uh, ask those again. And, uh, and we'll open the floor up to the attendees to, to ask some questions for you, Mike. Um, all right. So, should you put any treatment such as hoof ointments on soles as a preventative or leave them alone? Uh, it, it, of course, that goes back to your environmental situation at the time, number mm -hmm. one. If we have extremely wet conditions, yes, there are certain products that can be applied to help monitor, to help regulate the situation mm -hmm. itself. If it's extremely dry, the same applies as well. Uh, of course, uh, and I'll talk about one of the products that we have to offer that's going to do that. Uh, and then what this, this product actually has an additional benefit in that it's an antimicrobial, it's a disinfectant. So our culprit is bacteria, and if we can kill that off in advance before it enters, then we're, we're money ahead by doing that. Absolutely. So once again, it depends on the environmental situation. Uh, of course, during those harsh times, yes, we want to be very diligent about an application of the product. If we're under normal conditions, we would still use it as a preventative measure, but not as frequent. Mm -hmm. Maybe one to two times a week then, yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as you, on, on the reverse side, as you mentioned just a second ago, when it comes to, to poor management, mm -hmm. um, some of those caustic chemicals that we may want to put on that hoof could also be harming that tissue, which then can lead to these problems as well. That's right. Um, okay. Does Cushing's make a horse more prone to abscesses and slower to heal from them? Uh, the answer to that is absolutely yes. And anytime a horse has Cushing's or PPID, then the immune system of that horse has been compromised. Mm -hmm. And it's not able to fight off, uh, say, a bacterial infection like it would uh, if compared to a horse that doesn't have Cushing's. But yes, and of course that horse is also uh, very prone to laminitis mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So we need to be mindful of that. Okay. Yeah. And then on the, you know, of course Cushing's, but what about the insulin resistant horse? Same there as well, yes, right. Of course mm -hmm. we're dealing with a, a little different problem, but yes, the IR horse is very much subject uh, two hoof issues, and to a bout of laminitis. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's do one more question, and then we will uh, announce, announce the uh, answer and the winner. Okay. Um, how long do abscesses take to heal? How long before you can start riding again? Uh, that depends entirely upon the severity of the abscess itself. If this is a very mild case where the horse is not dead lame, uh, we get good drainage uh, a lot of time within a week's time in a mild situation like that the horse is ready to go back. Mm -hmm. If we have an abscess it's extremely deep within the hoof capsule there that's that's a different story in itself. It's going to take much longer for that situation to rectify itself. Absolutely and, and one thing that I noticed from that question too you know she mentions you know healing but so a lot of times that, that damage that is created to the hoof, mm -hmm. especially if it's there, you know, at the top of the coronary band, that doesn't heal. That's, that has to be completely grown out. That's right. 
Um, a lot, I think a lot of people, you know, they don't realize that, that, you know, that hoof has, mm -hmm. to, has to grow out. Right. It, it doesn't just heal up. And where we have some extreme cases, uh, it can be very nasty. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can take as long as a year to completely grow that old damaged, compromised foot out and replace it with a good foot. Mm -hmm. So if we could have prevented that, uh, then that would have been a much better situation. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's uh, announce the, the answer to this question. Uh, what are the two types of abscesses? Uh, and that was sole, subsolar, and um, um, the hoof wall. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, uh, and the winner of this uh, of question number two is Katie Nelson. Uh, Katie Nelson, you can email us at cservice at lifedatalabs.com. In the subject line, uh, you put a live giveaway winner. We'll need your address and we'll need your t-shirt size. Mm -hmm. And again, you've won the t-shirt, the hoof clay, the barrier finish, and the breeder's formula. Mm -hmm. Uh, so congratulations. We still have one more question, uh, and we still have our grand prize That's giveaway. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then while we're here in, in this little break, I'll remind everyone not to not to forget to uh, like and, and share the presentation, and uh, and help you know spread this spread this information. Um, all right, Mike. Are we ready to continue on, Carbon? Yes, sir. Uh, we're still talking about what causes of, of a hoof abscess. And another cause of a hoof abscess uh, is an unbalanced foot. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that the medial side and the lateral side is kept balanced in all four feet, mm -hmm. okay? If we have a side that's a little bit higher or a little bit lower uh, than the side that uh, is a little higher, that puts more stress upon the hoof wall itself. That horse or that hoof capsule is subject to cracking at that point because of a balance issue. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, and if we do have the crack, then that's going to be a direct entry point for bacteria to enter abscess, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if this, is, if this is a bad quarter crack and it goes all the way up into the coronary band, then we're looking at a year to grow that from the coronary band back out mm. then. So let's make sure that our hooves are kept balanced, that we stay on a regular farrier schedule, and that depends upon the horse, but typically that's going to be anywhere from four to six weeks. Horse needs to be trimmed or reset or whatever, mm -hmm. okay? And one other benefit, you know, of course, of, the, of that farrier schedule, you know, when you have your farrier coming out that frequently, a lot of times they can catch those problems before they develop, before right. they occur, they can they can see, you know, if some damage happened that you, you know that you didn't notice or or any of those developing problems. Mm -hmm. And one other thing too that I need to mention too, uh, if you have a shot horse, mm -hmm. uh, if a horseshoe nail is placed a little too close mm -hmm. to sensitive tissue, what that's done is that's brought in bacteria. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that can create an abscess itself mm -hmm. if we have a horseshoe nail that's a little close there, okay? Mm -hmm. And even if the farrier pulls that nail out, we still have that entry point left for the bacteria to get into the hoof capsule itself. Absolutely. Okay? And we're going to talk about a product toward the end, especially for our shot horses underneath the shoe that it's going to help us there as well. Wonderful. Okay? Absolutely. And as we continue to talk about uh, causes, probably this is going to be right up at the very top, mm -hmm. and that's poor hoof quality. Absolutely. Poor hoof quality. That can be thin soles. That can be thin hoof walls. And typically with a horse that has thin soles were more subject to bruising. A lot of those horses are going to be ouchy on a hard surface. If we have thin hoof walls, then that horse is very much subject to chipping and cracking. And if that happens to be a shod horse, then it's very difficult a lot of times for that horse to maintain the shoe between resets as well. Mm -hmm. Hoof quality. We're gonna talk about some things as far as feeding 
that we can incorporate into the diet of the horse that's going to help improve overall hoof quality. And we mm -hmm. can do that through nutrition, by controlling the environmental factors that would work on the hoof capsule itself. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, from a genetic standpoint, we can't alter that. Mm -hmm. And we know that there are certain breeds that are sometimes more prone to poor hoof growth. So the, to get the best foot genetically possible on those horses, then nutrition in the environment uh, plays a tremendous role there Absolutely. in itself. Absolutely. Now, those are some of the causes, and there are many. And so we've got to be diligent about controlling all of those to make that hoof capsule as healthy, mm -hmm. as resilient as possible against an invasion of bacteria. Absolutely. Our goal is to keep the bacteria out. Absolutely. And if we can do that, then we won't have an abscess. You know, the, the hoof wall, the hoof there, it, you know, it's a lot like a like a castle wall. It is. It's protecting. You know, it's protecting, and yeah. even the smallest crack can let in that bacteria. Right. Um, you know. So you know, when we talk about a compromised hoof or that poor hoof quality, that's that's like having that poor castle wall. When the invaders come, that wall comes falling down, and, mm -hmm. and then then you have your problem. Sure. Uh, you know, and the other thing that I kind of know is when we talk about the factors is how much the factors play against each other. You know, how many of those factors will lead to the poor hoof quality? Mm -hmm. Well, it actually only takes one, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, Mike, uh, of course, we've talked about the, the preventing. You want to hit some treatment? Yeah, let's spend bit? just a few minutes talking about some things that you can do as a horse owner uh, to, to uh, treat the situation if you're fortunate enough to have an abscess. And I hope you never have one, oh, number oh, one, yeah. okay? Uh, but our first goal is, number one, to determine, yes, my horse has an abscess, mm -hmm. okay? The next thing that we need to do is we need to locate where that abscess is. Is it in the sole of the foot? Is it in the hoof wall? If we can locate that, uh, and that uh, abscess is in a position where it can be paired out by a professional farrier or a veterinarian, we can go in, create a tiny hole, relieve that pressure that creates a drainage point for that inflammation uh, to leave. And once we relieve the pressure, that relieves the pain. Mm -hmm. And once we create that drainage hole, uh, this, shouldn't, this shouldn't drain, I'd say, more than 48 hours mm -hmm. at the most. And if it continues to drain beyond the 48 hours, then we need to get our vet back in because something else is going on as well, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Or if the horse uh, within the 48 hours is not much improved as far as being lame, let's get our vet back in. Or if we see some uh, uh, proud flesh or whatever that's coming from that exit wound, our vet needs to be involved in that situation as well. So determine, yes, we have an abscess, locate the abscess, relieve the abscess if, if it's in a position where that can take place, and then sometimes that abscess is going to be in a position where you as a horse owner will have a couple of options. We're either going to have to soak the foot or we're going to have to poultice the foot, one of the two. The most common thing that we can use as a soaking agent would be warm water mm -hmm. and Epsom salt. Mm -hmm. And of course, Epsom salt is simply nothing other than uh, magnesium sulfate is what you're looking at there. As a general rule, we're going to uh, mix about two cups of Epsom salt to a gallon of water. And we want to soak that foot at least 15 to 20 minutes, at least maybe one to two times a day. Okay? Now, if we have a horse that doesn't want to cooperate and stand in a bucket of water, then we can use the poultice method mm -hmm. as well. We have two or three options there that we can use. 
One of these would be Epsom salt in a gel form, mm -hmm. which is very easy to use. There's another product called Ictamol that we can use. And then there's another product called Animal Lintex. And all three of these are going to be drawing agents. We'll apply these to that affected foot. We're going to wrap those. And then we're going to change that bandage daily. And we're going to watch and we'll continue to do that until we see drainage and that abscess has been relieved. And of course, there's a, there's a home remedy too that works quite well. It's called Sugardine where we take about a quarter cup of sugar and we mix in about three tablespoons of iodine, betadine, or whatever. And we use that as a poultice as well. So that's kind of the uh, simplified treatment process there. Wonderful. All right. Well, I know... You know, we've talked about what an abscess is, and of course we've gotten into the treatment methods. Um, but as you have mentioned, the easiest way to treat an abscess mm -hmm. is to prevent one from ever happening. Right, right. So where, mm -hmm. where do horse owners begin when it comes to preventing okay. that hoof abscess? Of course, we, we pointed about, I don't know, six or seven things that were causes. So in prevention, we need to focus upon the causes, number one. Mm -hmm and we need to do a good job in managing those particular uh, agents that would create an abscess in the foot of the horse itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, preventing an abscess, it starts and it ends with building a good quality hoof. Absolutely. If we have a good quality hoof with thick soles, thick hoof walls, and we manage the environment, we feed a balanced diet, then that horse is less likely to have an abscess. Mm -hmm. Or some of the other secondary issues such as thrush, wall separation, white line, seedy toe. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to focus on there in itself. And right now, we're ready for question number three, Corbin. All right, let's do question number three. This is the last live question. Of course, we do have our grand prize giveaway, which we'll talk on a little bit a little bit more uh, later on. Um, this will be for the t-shirt, the hoof clay, the finish, and the breeder's formula. Uh, so you have two minutes to answer this question. Again, unfortunately, this is for the US only uh, due to those international giveaway laws. Um, but here is the question. Name two ways a horse owner can help relieve the pressure created by an abscess. Name two ways a horse owner can help relieve the pressure created by an abscess. You have two minutes. Good luck. All right, Mike, I've got more questions for you. All right, Corbin. Uh, this one right here caught my eye a little bit earlier. Of course, we know that, especially here in America, Mm -hmm. that uh, many of our horses are overweight. Mm -hmm. So how does obesity play a role when it comes to uh, hoof abscesses? The, the extra weight that a horse is carrying uh, applies more pressure to the hoof capsule itself. The more pressure that's put on the hoof capsule, the more likely we're going to have flaring, the more likely we're going to have cracking and chipping mm -hmm. going on as well. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, in fact, I think we've stated many times uh, in our previous uh, uh, live programs that approximately 50% of the horses in the U.S. are overweight. So it's, uh, it behooves us to maintain the correct body condition score. Absolutely. And we always want to shoot for at least a five to six. And once we get over that, then we're setting our horse up for all type of medical issues, metabolic issues, hoof issues, joint issues, and so forth. Absolutely. Um, are some horses prone to abscesses? I have a I have a thoroughbred. She has just foaled in April and has been plagued with abscesses. Uh, could it be the grains? Uh, th the way that I would answer that, Corbin, yes, there are certain breeds that are more prone to poor hoof quality. Mm -hmm. 
if we have poor hoof quality, then that horse is going to be more subject to an abscess. Okay. And of course, we know that thoroughbreds are notorious for poor hoof quality. Thin soles, thin hoof walls, That's flat-footed, underrun heels. Mm -hmm. And all those contribute to an abscess over a period of time. So we, we're dealing with genetics there. And then we've got to focus on nutrition. We've got to control the environmental factors. And once again, we're trying to get the best possible foot as far as quality underneath that thoroughbred. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, I believe we have a winner. A winner. Okay. So what are... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, name two ways a horse owner can help relieve the pressure created by an abscess. And we were looking for soaking and poulticing. That's right. Uh, so our winner is Alyssa Robertson. Congratulations. Email us at cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Again, that email address should be scrolling down uh, at some point in time below me. Uh, you're going to win the t-shirt, the hook clay, the finish, and the breeder's formula. Um, and all we're going to need is your t-shirt size and your shipping address. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right, Mike, let's get back in talking about prevention. Sure. All right. Uh, of course, we're coming to the end now. Mm -hmm. And we, we have talked about many causes. <clears throat> so we're going to be more diligent about managing the causes themselves. We're going to be very diligent in making sure that the horse is receiving a balanced diet. We're going to be very diligent about controlling those environmental conditions, that wet, that dry, okay? And then we're going to be very diligent about picking up those feet, mm -hmm. keeping those feet cleaned, inspecting those feet on a daily basis there. And then when it comes to nutrition, one of the products that we have available here at Life Data Labs mm -hmm that we have had now for 40 plus years is a product called Farrier's Formula. Absolutely. Our hoof supplement. And Farrier's Formula here in the U.S. is the number one recommended hoof supplement by Farriers mm -hmm. here in the U.S. itself. Farrier's Formula is the only hoof supplement that has been independently tested and the results published in the veterinary record Absolutely. as well, okay? Uh, Life Data Labs that produces this product, Dr. Frank Gravely spent many years doing research on horses through blood work in determining what was missing from these horses that had the poor quality feet. Okay. And through this research, he was to identify the deficiencies. He was able to determine the daily needs of the horse. And then he also put the product together in the right proportion and ratio mm -hmm. so that everything in the product could be utilized by the horse itself. And what Farrier's Formula is going to do, it's going to regrow the foot internally over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And as it regrows that foot internally, it's going to thicken and strengthen that hoof wall. Mm -hmm. It's going to in, uh, improve the internal aspect around the coffin bone itself, and it's going to thicken the sole of the foot, mm -hmm. which is going to allow us to get the best foot genetically possible underneath that horse itself. Absolutely. So there's various versions of Farrier's formula in the U.S., it's referred to as double strength. Okay, from double strength. In the U.K., it's our concentrate. Double concentrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another option here in the U.S., if you'd like to incorporate a joint supplement along with Farrier's formula, then there's a product called DS Plus Joint. Absolutely. That's available as well. That's in Canada now and as well. And this product is available in Canada. And of course, as we said, in the UK, you have the concentrate and you have the original Fares formula as well. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. The original might be a little bit more familiar to you in the UK. Um, I know a lot of the farriers um, in, in your area will carry the double concentrate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, there are other areas in Europe where the double concentrate might be, might be easier to find. Um, now, with the double strength plus joint, that is still going to provide you the exact same benefits as farrier's formula. It's just going to have those added nutrients needed for joint health. 
So that's basically two products in one that's with right. this one. Right. Absolutely. So from a nutritional standpoint, if we'll incorporate our hoof supplement into what you're already feeding, mm -hmm. that's going to help improve hoof quality in itself. Now, when we talk about the environmental factors that we've got to deal with, and that's your wet, that's your dry, that's the bacteria. We do have a liquid product called uh, Farrier's Finish, and it is a very mild, it is a non-caustic product. And this is a product uh, that can be brushed on, it can be sponged on. And if we're only doing it as a preventative measure, and I would do it as a preventative measure along mm. with Farrier's formula, uh, that's going to help uh, moderate the moisture within that hoof capsule, and it's going to help fight off any bacteria that would be present on the outside of that hoof capsule as well, whether that's the hoof wall or whether that's the sole of the foot. Absolutely. Now, the Ferris Finish is an excellent antimicrobial if we had a thrush problem or if we had some white line or seedy toe that's going on as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that it's able to regulate the moisture content is through a phospholipid compound that's in the product. If it's extremely dry where that hoof capsule wants to contract, chip, and crack, it's going to help retain the needed moisture within the hoof capsule and it's going to help that help keep that uh, hoof wall pliable and supple where mm -hmm. it will actually move and give mm -hmm. and not crack. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you had a horse who was out in pasture 24 7, mm -hmm. couldn't get away from the environment, mm -hmm. Bears finish. Absolutely. In fact, that's going to help you tremendously against the attack of bacteria and to help regulate the moisture level. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So someone, someone who, again, the horse is exposed 24-7, how often would they want to do the fairies? If finish? you're under extreme conditions, if it's wet, I would want to use it at, at least two to three times per week or every other day. Absolutely. Okay? And for those horses that are outside 24-7, if you could get them up for a few minutes, kind of let those feet dry out. If there's a stall that you can put them mm -hmm. in, especially if that hall stall has some shavings or whatever, mm -hmm. that'll help dry out the feet. Make an application, wait, give it 30 minutes, and then turn the horse back Absolutely. out. Okay. We, we actually had a testimonial come in just the other day uh, where, where she was applying the farrier's finish, but then was using shoe covers for just a few, you know, half mm -hmm. an hour. Sure just to help keep that farrier's finish on because, you know, she, I don't think she had, you know, like a barn or anywhere like that for the hoof, for the horse to stand. And then, of course, you wouldn't want to leave those on forever, but right. after about 30 sure. minutes, would take the, the shoe covers off. And, and yeah, it's a good, good idea. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and one thing that I failed to mention, through, through this phospholipid compound, the lipid side, which is a fat molecule, is going to help shed the excess moisture from the hoof capsule. And we know how detrimental the excess moisture can be to that hoof capsule itself. Now, one of the other things that you can do if you're under extremely wet conditions, and we know that those extremely wet conditions are going to soften the hoof wall and especially the sole of the foot itself, all right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that you can do, and this is not on the bottle itself, mm -hmm. okay? is that if we will add two tablespoons of Epsom salt to mm. this bottle, that's going to help wick away the water, especially from the sole of the foot, uh, and it's going to help harden the sole of the foot without creating any damage whatsoever to the foot. Mm. But if you're under extreme wet conditions and you need just a little boost, what's beyond... Uh, uh, fair's finish, then consider adding a couple of tablespoons of some Epsom salt to the product. Wonderful. And it'll help tremendously. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So that's one of our products. Now the other product, which is strictly an antimicrobial, is our Life Data Hoof Clay. And I like this product as well. In fact, both products can be used together at the same time. Mm -hmm. We'd actually use our hoof clay first for specific problem areas, 
uh, and then we would finish the foot off with the farrier's finish uh, at that point in time. Now the thing about our hoof clay is, is that it maintains this soft putty-like form. So it's a little, it, little bit dark in there. Let's, yeah. uh... Can you see it? Soft, putty-like, very tacky, very sticky. Well, it's made from just all natural clay, right? It is, and it has a little uh, tea tree oil and some tame dye dye. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, it is a non-caustic product. Mm -hmm. Corbin yeah, yeah. wouldn't stick his finger <laughs> might, in might it. Might be screaming. That's right. Okay. Uh, but it's a great product for thrush. It's yeah. a great product if you've got some wall separation where you go in and you clean that debris out and that you actually fill the void underneath that hoof wall with the clay itself. It's also an excellent product to use if you have a shod horse. Mm -hmm. If you will get your farrier to coat the entire white line area with the clay and then apply the shoe on top of the clay, that will help keep that white line area clean and white and bacteria free. And if you happen to have some wall separation going on, it'll help alleviate that situation over a period of time. And then the other thing that the clay is going to do is that when you nail the shoe on, you're actually driving your nail through the clay itself. Mm -hmm. So you're protecting that new nail hole and the nail itself from any bacteria that's being driven in at that mm -hmm. point in time as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know that we can we can drag in bacteria when we nail on the shoe, mm -hmm. and this will help alleviate that situation as well. I know the question's coming, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and, and ask it now. Sure. Um, how can we use the hoof clay with the hoof abscess? With the hoof abscess? Very good question, okay. After that hoof abscess has ruptured, after it has completely, and I mean completely, quit draining, we can pack the clay into that exit wound. Mm. But if it's draining, we do not want to seal that exit wound up. Mm -hmm. We want to give it sufficient time to completely stop, and then we can use this in the exit or the problem area itself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Pretty much just as a synopsis here, when it comes to, of course, prevention, you have the Ferris formula that's going to help grow out that hoof. Mm -hmm. It's going to help strengthen the hoof. It's going to help the sole depth, which is going to create a hoof that is stronger and, uh, and more resistant to these developing problems. Correct. Then, of course, we have the farrier's finish that's mm -hmm. going to tackle the environment mm -hmm. and a lot of the antimicrobials. Mm -hmm. And then we have the hoof clay for the hoof cracks and hoof defects mm -hmm. uh, where that bacteria and so on might come through. Mm -hmm. Then as far as a treatment goes, these products can help you because you've got the Ferris formula. Again, we talked about these hoof abscess won't, the damage it's caused won't heal, has to be grown out. And if the hoof had a hoof abscess, then it wasn't technically a healthy quality hoof. And so as we feed Ferris formula, it's gonna grow out a healthier, better quality hoof mm -hmm to replace the old damage hoof. That's correct. And then you have the farrier's finish again to control the environment and the hoof clay which can be put packed into the to the ruptured area mm -hmm. after it's drained. That is correct. To protect that area from further problems happening. That is right, sure. Yeah. Right. And we can use we can use the finish uh, just as a preventative measure, mm -hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it works well in a situation like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, for and those... actually, actually, if you'll use the finish along with the farrier's formula, it's going to help protect that new growth that uh, your farrier's formula is growing for you mm -hmm. from the coronary band itself. That, that's a good point. You know, when we talk about factors that affect hoof quality, of course, we have genetics, which there's really nothing we can do about. Uh, we've got um, nutrition, which... That's where Ferris formula comes in. And then we have the environment, mm -hmm. uh, which is the finishing clay. Uh, but if we're only tackling one of those, if we're only tackling nutrition and not taking care of the environment, all that new good growth is just going to get eaten up by the environment. Mm -hmm. But on the reverse side, if you're only taking care of the environment and not producing good quality hoof, then you're going to have problems still. That's correct. 
So you really have to tackle it on, on both situations. That is absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, well, Mike, I know we probably have some questions coming in. Uh, so we're going to answer those here in a little bit. But real quick, let's talk about the grand prize giveaway. Sure. I'd like to know what it is. Myself. All right. Okay. What are we going to give away? All Corbin? right. Well, we actually have a slide. We'll just have uh, okay. Mr. Will pull it up for us. So we're going to give wow. away okay. a Farrier's formula, double strength, mm-hmm. a Farrier's finish, mm-hmm. and a life data hoof clay. Okay. All three of those products, which is what we recommend for preventing mm-hmm. and, of course, for that treatment method mm-hmm. as well. So regardless if you have a horse with a hoof abscess or you're just looking at preventing it, these are the three products that we're going to, that we recommend. Mm-hmm. So we're going to give that away to three people. Wow. So there'll be three lucky winners. Three then. lucky winners. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go to lifedata.live slash win. Uh, and I think we're also going to have uh, that link posted in the comments here in a second as well. Um, but at lifedata.live slash win, uh, you can just follow the instructions. Uh, there's a few different things that you can do to increase your chances to win. Uh, the first question that they're going to find is, of course, we are going to have another live event in September. I think it's the 16th, I believe, um, I think. We're going to have one in September, but mm-hmm. we haven't decided what we're going to talk about. Uh, so we've given a few of the uh, topics that we've thought about. I think white line disease is one of them. Uh, uh, laminitis founder was one. Uh, Nutritional-related hoof problems. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was, a, there was a fourth one that I've... Uh, uh, quarter cracks. Okay. Uh, so those are four different topics. Uh, we're going to ask you to vote on it. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a, that's how you're going to enter it. If you're watching live right now and, and don't plan on doing the contest, feel free to drop your opinion on what our next topic will be in the comments. Um, you can share the contest with a friend. That's going to increase your chances to win. Uh, there's ch- several, several different options there that you can do uh, to help increase your chances to win. And the more you can do one of them or you can do all of them. Uh, so it really just depends on, on what you... Sure. How many points and how many cha- how many times you want to increase your chances to win? Uh, so that contest is going to run through Tuesday. So it's going to oh, it's going to end at midnight Tuesday morning, right? So eleven and then eleven we'll, fifty nine we'll, Monday night is. We'll announce those three winners. So Tuesday. we'll announce them Tuesday at two o'clock Central Time here in the mm-hmm. U.S. Um, and so come and join us. We'll announce what our next live event will be, and we'll announce the three winners. Um, and so. If you are, of course, this is recorded and available to watch after. Uh, so if it this is if it's Saturday and you're watching this, you can still enter the grand prize giveaway. Uh, and of course, as you see, the secret word is hoof quality. That's going to double your your chances to win since you watched it live. Since you're watching this Saturday, uh, you can use that uh, code word to increase your chances to win. Very good, Corbin. So that that's our grand prize, and again, that is for the U.S. only. Um, now, Mike, let's uh, let's open it up to, sure, let's... to some questions. Uh, and if anyone's wondering about the stickiness of hoof clay, it is mm. it is all over my hands. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's see. We got a couple people asking for the next topic to be on laminitis. Okay, it's a popular subject as well. Uh, let me go back here and find some. Uh, do you have any products that would help navicular horses? Uh, various formula would help you internally depending upon what the exact cause of the pain that that horse is experiencing. If it's a tissue problem, then you would get some benefits from various formula because various formula is going to help improve essentially all dermal tissue or connective tissue within the horse itself. If it is a bone problem, I don't think you would get much benefit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Of course, x-rays will confirm whether or not you have a bone problem, whether you have a a chip or a crack or something along that line. But if it's a soft tissue, then yes, you'd get some benefits by feeding Ferris formula. Plus, you're going to get the benefit of improving overall hoof quality as you feed it. Mm-hmm. And, of course, one of the other things that Ferris Formula is going to do is it's going to help improve hair coat, hair condition. It's going to help improve mane, tail. It's going to help improve the overall health and quality of the skin of your horse as well. Absolutely. 
Um, okay, I've, I see a few people who've mentioned they've had some connectivity problems. Again, this is recorded, so if you've had some connectivity problems, mm -hmm. you can you can rewatch it. Uh, of course, when you're when you're going live like like we are today, uh, there's a lot of things that can happen. Of course, you know some of you are in Europe and. And I know not everyone has the same bandwidth, and, and what bandwidth you have can can affect that. Uh, but you know, if you did miss out on anything, you can rewatch this under the recorded version. Um, all right. Again, if you have any question, any uh, questions, you can feel free to drop them in at any time. Um, let's see. Are abscesses mostly caused by gravel or punctures? Uh, could be either one, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that the leading cause of an abscess, number one, is poor hoof quality. Yes, an abscess can be created from a puncture. And yes, you could have a, some foreign debris to get in underneath the hoof wall itself mm -hmm. uh, and start and create an abscess, yes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, is Ferris formula good for picky horses? Uh, palatability is very good on Ferris formula. Mm -hmm. We have had very few problems with palatability, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a pelleted hoof supplement, yep. uh, so that is one, one benefit. Uh, and of course, as you can see, these bags are, are lumpy and, and so on, and mm -hmm. that's because they're vacuum sealed for the freshness. Uh, I know we have you know, some of those picky, very picky eaters. You might want to open up the bag and, and let it air out. Uh, before uh, providing it, um, but yeah, very, very. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually uh, not too long ago did a little bit of a, of a taste test study, and uh, every single one of the horses in the in the barn ate it. Sure, yeah. So, so yeah. Most of the time, we do not have any any problems. Um, let's see. My horses has a damaged hoof and scarring above the hoof at the hairline. That scar cracks open when he walks and runs. Will the finish help with the scarring? Uh, it's going to help protect the area. Depending on, upon how much damage is done there at the coronary band uh, will determine, I guess, the, the, the future outcome of that hoof wall itself. If you've had some major done major damage done at the coronary band, oftentimes uh, you're going to always have some distortion uh, within the hoof wall itself where that damage was done at the coronet. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the Ferris finish is going to help fight off any bacteria, particularly if this is an open deal right now. Uh, and, and farrier's formula should help regrow that foot back out mm -hmm. and help strengthen the hoof wall, but you still may end up with a distortion within the hoof wall. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you can get it grown out and it's stabilized and prevent that future cracking, then you'll, you'll be ahead of the game then, mm -hmm. yes. And, and something to keep in mind when we talk about the hoof growing out, that, you know, that happens from the... From the coronary, coronary band, band down, sure. um, and so you know the more you know if that scar is there at the at the top of the coronary band, um, you know that's going to you know like you mentioned with the hoof abscess, it could take almost an entire year. Sure, it, it will that, take a year to completely grow that foot out. Yes, or to go all the from way the down. coronary band. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I make sure. Let's see, can you feed your vitamins separately? Uh, you can. Ferris formula can be fed as a treat, uh, <clears throat> but you can also just top dress uh, Ferris formula with what you're already feeding, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and then if you're trying to feed, let's say, different vitamins separately, like, you know, we talked about feeding oh, maybe vitamins Maybe I misunderstood separately. the question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things we always we always discuss, you know, when it comes to feeding things separately, is every horse again is is different. Right. Um, and so, you know, if you're going to feed things separately, it's hard to know what that horse is missing without doing a, a blood study. Right. Um, you know, of course, that's where Ferris formula developed was we took entire populations mm -hmm. of horses, compared them yeah. from from horses that had hoof problems to horses that did not, and we found those correlated nutrients. 
Um, and so when you're feeding, the, like I said, if you're just feeding biotin and your horse isn't deficient in biotin, then, then you're probably not going to see a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of help there. Uh, the research has already gone into Ferris formula mm -hmm. if you're looking at a hoof supplement, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, well, if we knew a little bit more of what she was asking, mm -hmm. you know, if, if she's looking for a vitamin mineral supplement uh, to complement the basic diet of the horse, which is grass, and we mm -hmm. have a, an additional product called Barn Bag, mm -hmm. depending on where you're located, mm -hmm. whether you're in the U.S. or not. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then someone had a question about the registering for the giveaway. Um, so all the extra ways to win, uh, that's that's how you register. So once when you sign, you'll probably ask for your email address and so on. Once when you enter in that, uh, the, it'll then ask you what topic you'd like to hear about next time. Once when you've answered that, you've earned points to win. And then all the other options are just extra entries. Uh, and you also want to make sure that, you know, if you have different security things on your computer, uh, you know, it may ask you to, um, you know, look at your cookies or something like that. Uh, but, but yeah. All right. Um, does the hoof clay stay on the hoof for a while or does it need reapplying in between shoeing? Uh, that's a very good question and it's one that we didn't answer, but under normal conditions, if you were treating a thrush problem uh, and you were under normal conditions without a lot of excess moisture, uh, the hoof clay is going to be there for about three to four days. You'll have enough residual left for that length of time. And then at that point, you can come back and do another application of the clay if that's mm -hmm. the situation. Uh, if it's extremely wet, then you would have to increase the frequency of use. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and with the hoof clay, one of the you know the reason why it's tacky and so on is to hold the ingredients in place. And so I know even though sometimes that hoof clay may have seemed that it's fallen out, mm -hmm. a lot of times the ing actual ingredients sure. are, are still are still in there in mm -hmm. place. Um, can we use Ferris formula products with Vetrican hoof care spray? Yes, you can. Uh, does the clay set hard? No, it does not harden. No, it maintains that soft consistency. Uh, let's see. My horse has a small hole in front of the hoof wall that started to crack. Would you use the clay for this situation to fill that hole? Uh, if you have a small hole in the hoof wall, make sure, and we don't know all the if, ands, and buts about what's going on there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got some wall separation going on there, then you need to address that situation first, okay? Let's make sure we don't have a white line problem uh, associated with what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I would encourage you to uh, seek the advice of your farrier on that situation. Absolutely. Without me not knowing all the facts. Absolutely. Uh, the secret code is hoof quality. And it's all one word. Will, you want to pop that up one more time? Uh, you can see it's all one word, hoof quality. Uh, and that will increase your chances to win. Uh, let's see. Uh, regarding biotin, I have a, a gypsy vanner who I have been told that too much biotin could bring on issues with overproduction of keratin, uh, leading to melanders and salanders. Would various formula be safe for him? Yes, in fact, there's, uh, there's only 20 milligrams of biotin in various formula itself. Uh, and I don't think that would be, create any type of a problem. In fact, with biotin, it is a B vitamin. Mm -hmm. And if you happen to uh, create an excess of B vitamin in the horse, uh, uh, it will be uh, passed on out through the urine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's, and that's a good point. You know, when you're supplementing, uh, you really want to make sure you're not Overdoing it, yes. Uh, you know, there are a lot of nutrients where the excesses, of course, deficiencies can affect the hoof, but excesses will affect the, the hoof as well. Um, and so if you have any questions regarding supplementation, feel free to email us, uh, cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Uh, you know, we can take a look at that and we can make sure that, you know, you're not over supplementing. 
Um, you know, especially with, with Ferris formula, you, and if you're feeding Ferris formula in a separate joint supplement, uh, you know, you may want to check with that, um, which is why we've got the, of course, the Ferris formula sure. DS plus joint, uh, which you wouldn't have to worry about over supplementing with that. Uh, cause you would just feed, feed that one instead mm -hmm. of two separate. Right. Um, all right, Mike, well, uh, let's close it out. And if, if we did not answer your question, like I said, we had a lot of people on today. Uh, a lot of comments coming through. So if we missed a question, uh, please contact us and, and let us know. Um, we'll be happy to answer you answer your sure. question. We're happy to talk to you. You can feel free to to call us. Uh, you can email us at cservice at lifedatalabs.com or even private message us here on Facebook. Um, but thank you again for joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to see you Tuesday when we announce the grand prize winners. Um, and if you guys have anything that you need help with, please uh, please let us know. We're absolutely, we're here to help. Absolutely. By all means. And we wish each of you a great, happy weekend. Absolutely. Happy, yeah. happy weekend. And if you do message us, it might be Monday before we get back to you. That's right. Because it is the weekend. But uh, have, a, have a wonderful weekend, and, and uh, we'll see you Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you for watching.